Hi, I'm Avery Davidson. And I'm Kristen Oaks. Thank you for joining us for This Week in Louisiana Agriculture, the only TV show bringing Louisiana farmers and consumers together every week. And we begin this week by hitting the road. A group of about 50 Louisiana cattlemen traveled west into Texas for four days, and Avery, you went with them. Oh yeah, it was a lot of fun. The trip started at the country's largest livestock show and ended with ranchers knowing a lot more about making a great steak for you. These cattlemen already know that not every breed of cattle is suited to Louisiana's warm climate. That's why at the Houston Livestock Show and Rodeo, they're checking out the heifers and steers raised by J.D. Hudgens cattle out of Hungerford, Texas. We raise Brahmin cattle at J.D. Hudgens. Coleman Locke is a fifth generation rancher. His family has been raising Brahmin cattle since 1915. Brahmin cattle are unique in that all humped cattle in the world are boss indicus. All the other cattle that don't have humps are Boss Taurus. The main difference is that Boss Indicus cattle have a hump. Boss Indicus cattle can sweat. They don't have to give off heat through their lungs. So they don't pant on a hot day because they sweat and they're comfortable in hot weather. Then they're so less kin to all other cattle that there is a heterosis or hybrid vigor exhibited when crossed with those breeds. So they get a hybrid kick and they're more productive, uh, more fertile, they live longer, produce more milk and raise more beef. That's why the cattle on many of these Louisiana ranchers farms have some Brahmin influence. While that's good for Louisiana's weather, the cattle are not suited for the colder climes where most feedlots are located. That's why these ranchers are touring Graham Land and Cattle in Gonzales, Texas, the only feed yard strategically located to feed out Brahmin-influenced cattle. We attract a lot of light cattle that a lot of commercial feed yards probably don't even want on their inventory, so that gives us an opportunity. Jay Gray is the general manager here and says the founder, Dr. Charles W. Graham, had that in mind when he started this business in 1987. When you go east out of Gonzales, head down Interstate 10 and, and head toward Florida, there's just not any commercial feed yards to, to speak of and uh, of record, if you will. So that's uh, kind of unique and, and, and it'd be an advantage to, to them in, in terms of if, if there were cattle that, that they needed uh, to feed would, would maybe potentially come here because that would be a you know, certainly a draw for our facility being that close to them and the closest operation to them as far as uh, someone that can, can handle their cattle and finish them properly and, and get them sold. Well, you know, for a long time, a lot of us have been told that our Brahmin influenced cattle don't feed as well as others. Well, Dr. Graham had a thought that yes, we can do that. And even we saw yesterday that there are Nolan Ryan uh, beef certified feedlots. So, uh, Nolan's doing his beef masters and what have you that, uh, and other cattle that have Brahmin influence in them. We saw plenty of cattle with a lot of hump, with horn, saw cattle from Mexico, I think uh, 30,000 capacity there at Graham, 25% or so are from across the border in Mexico. Marty Woldridge is the chairman of the Louisiana Farm Bureau Federation Livestock Advisory Committee. He helped organize this tour of Southeast Texas for Louisiana ranchers. They need to see the big picture. They need to see where their calves go after they're even sold in that local barn, or they can see that maybe they want to retain their ownership into the Graham feedlot at Gonzales. We have a lot of Brahmin influenced cattle in Louisiana. They feed better in a South Texas climate instead of going up into the cold zones of the Panhandle. This trip has been fabulous in terms of um, meeting with not only purebred breeders within the Santa Gertrudis and Brahmin breeds, but also backgrounders, preconditioners, feeders, and of course now we're at sexing, which um, definitely could be beneficial even coming back to a commercial producer. Amelia Kent is the vice chair of the Louisiana Farm Bureau Federation Livestock Advisory Committee and knows very well the ups and downs of the cattle industry. By nature, agriculture is one of those industries where you do face struggles, you do face challenges, and you pick yourself up and you get past them, and you become a better producer because of them. We're all in the same business. We're all here to produce beef cattle for consumers, 
and produce them a product that they want and that they want to purchase. Consumers win when we put a tasty product that's not only delicious and healthy and nutritious, but it's one of the safest products that we could have put out to the American public. Planning for next year's trip is already underway, according to Louisiana Farm Bureau Commodity Director Ron Harrell. He says next year the group will likely head east into Mississippi and Tennessee. To look at photos from the trip and to learn more about Farm Bureau, visit our website at twilatv.org.